these people are volunteering to undergo a unique experience. By the end of this program, 10 of them will have transcended the limits of their consciousness to become part of the hypnotic world of Paul McKenna. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul McKenna. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome once again to another half hour of aerobics for the imagination. Before we start, I'd like to say a big thank you to all the people who've written to me recently, especially to those people that I've helped. For example, I got a lovely letter here that says, uh, Dear Paul, I just wanted to say that since reading your book, my whole life has changed. No longer am I the shy introvert I used to be. I can now go out on my own. I can look people in the eye and actually make conversation with them. My confidence is growing all the time. Yours sincerely, John Major. <laughs> right, now let's select tonight's ten stars from our battalion of volunteers. Hypnotic trance is a state comparable to daydreaming, and a state which, to the trained eye, presents several subtle physiological signatures. Paul is able to tell that his subject's consciousness is altering from many indicators. These include changes in breathing, skin colour, muscle toning and rapid eye movements. Paul then simply offers a suggestion and lets his subject's imagination do the rest. He was saying that your body's getting heavy and your right hand or one of your arms is going to get heavier and longer than the other. Well, I could feel my right arm nearly touching the floor. Our ten mesmerised megastars are now completely ready, but first, I'm just talking to you, Martin, because for the rest of the evening, you are going to become the man who can only say yes. <laughs> you will always answer any questions yes, except when you are taking part in a hypnotic routine. Hi, Zoe. By the way, are you having a good time this evening, Martin? Yes. Now, these people are hypnotised, as you can see. Good job you're not, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> did you come by camel this evening? Yeah. You did? <laughs> With your girlfriend? Yeah. In fact, your girlfriend is the camel, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Bank official Amanda Fabian from Middlesex never suspected she had the kind of vivid imagination hypnosis uncovered. And Jill Sim, an ophthalmic nursing sister, found hypnosis such an eye-opener, she now wants to incorporate it into her work. When I wake you in the next few moments, you're all going to become airline stewards or stewardesses. You'll all be preparing to demonstrate the in-flight procedures for the benefit of the passengers. So as I describe them, you'll have an appropriate action to match. Ready? Eyes open, wide awake, wake you, wake you, rise and shine. Step off the podium, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard this flight. If at any time you should require anything, do not hesitate to ask one of our stewards or stewardesses who are all trained to help you with a smile. <laughs> Here is the facial expression you should adopt when taking the plastic lid off your in-flight meal. <laughs> And this is the expression you'll have if you actually eat it. <laughs> In a moment, we'll be bringing you round hot towels. In the event that they're too hot to hold, you'll be doing this. <laughs> and when you throw one over your face, you'll make a noise like this. <laughs> Should we hit any turbulence, you're advised to drink your scalding hot coffee like this. <laughs> and finally, when you all discover that there's just one parachute between 235 passengers, you'll all begin fighting for it like this. Madrid-born secretary Tamara Vasilisin says she wanted Paul to hypnotise her after seeing and enjoying his stage show, while investment unit manager Martin Higgins says he was surprised at the antics he performed, and all without the aid of alcohol. Martin, Tamara, um, do you believe what you read in the newspapers these days? Most of it. Yes. What about you, Martin? Some of it. Some of it. Mm. Sleep. 
When you wake up, you're both going to believe that you're journalists. You're here to interview me. You'll be a writer for The Telegraph, so you'll be polite and incisive, asking me questions that would be fitting of a Telegraph writer. When you wake up, you're going to be a journalist from the Sunday Sports. <laughs> and you know what sort of newspaper that is. <laughs> Eyes open, wide awake, wakey-wakey. I'll be with you in just a moment then, mate. Yes, if you'd like to start, then. So, Mr McKenna, I'd like to ask you, um, mm. do you think, first of all, that being able to hypnotise, you could start it as a baby in, a, in the womb? Well, um, you could hypnotise, um, you know, people of any age, obviously, but... So um... you don't know, Mr McKenna, do you? You only go for the younger woman. I've seen it. I've read it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, do you think you could let him finish yes. the No, no, I've got his attention now. I can <laughs> you just a moment, mate. Just a moment. I'm sorry, yeah. if you'd like to continue. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so, did you used to hypnotise your teachers when you were at school? To get oh, no, I bet you did. Yeah, I bet you did. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not a psychic gift. It's, it's a series of psychological techniques that I, I learned a few years ago. Right, and could you make... I mean, I don't believe in it, so would you be able to make me give up smoking, for example? Or... Well, I claim to have stopped more people from smoking than any other hypnotist in the world. But what else oh, do you right. claim to have done more than any other hypnotist in the world? <laughs> Do you think I can actually finish? I'm just answering these questions. I'll be with sorry, you in just a moment, sir. It's ridiculous. Yes. Um, Mr. McKenna, you said you hypnotised your teacher. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say anything. I'm sorry, you did. I, I heard. <laughs> exactly who have you hypnotised in your time, Mr. McKenna? Well, about. Uh, any famous people? Any well, superstars? Any yeah, models? I suppose so. Models? But obviously, Nile? they have to remain confidential. You know, the, the, the work I do with So you're not going people. to disclose who you, which top models you're actually hypnotised? Well, I didn't say top models exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Save for argument's sake, Naomi Campbell. <laughs> what, what have you done to her? I, I haven't done anything to Naomi Campbell. <laughs> I, I don't know how she got mentioned. I help people using hypnotherapy. Yes, but how would you def actually define help, Mr. McGillan? Well, I might help them overcome a fear or phobia. Fear of sex, perhaps? No, no absolutely not. I don't mean, know what are you talking about. I mean, it might be a, something like a fear of snakes or a fear of flying. It's how many like people that. have... Flying. Flying, yes. Flying. Flying. Hmm. <laughs> I'll be back with you in a moment. Yes, do you have some other questions? Um, yes, could you get rid of him, actually? He's rather... <laughs> much He's better than being stuck up, Barry. <laughs> I mean, it's just this sort of thing, isn't it? What else do you want to know? Do people come to you for advice, like politicians or anybody like that, or on the stock markets? Or... Well, some people actually, uh, business people, come to see me for learning stress control, those kind of things. I'd better just let him ask a few more questions. Mm, to... On to this businessman. Business Financial man. gain, Mr. McKenna? <laughs> have to earn a living. So you hypnotise businessmen? Yeah. As well as top models? Well, I didn't say I hypnotised top models. <laughs> OK, when was the last time you flew a model to the moon? <laughs> Any models Under to the moon. hypnosis, Mr. McKenna, for your own ill-gotten gain. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I've got it recorded, Mr. McKenna. There's no getting yeah. away. Mm. McKenna Gate. <laughs> Do you have any finishing questions? I, I think you've. Well, Mr. McKenna, you've told me so much in this space of five well, minutes. Don't think I've told you anything. Actually, I think you've told me plenty. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sleep. OK, get a hold of the phone, hold the phone to your ear, that's it, because the editor wants to know the bare bones of the story. Off you go. This, this guy is unbelievable. For his own financial gain, he would actually hypnotise top models. He flies them off to the moon. He's got... Well, God knows how many he's got up there. I've got no idea. <laughs> he was taught as a baby in the womb by his teacher at school. <laughs> compulsion with flying, compulsion with the moon, compulsion with women and sex. It's unbelievable. You would not know the things this man told me. I've got it on tape. I spent a good, what, 15, 20 hours with him. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Live story poured out. I mean, this man's going to be wrecked by the time I finish with him. OK, tomorrow. <laughs> Your editor wants to know, what's the headline going to be? McKenna is Marvel after all. <laughs> OK. Now, the editor wants to know, do you have a headline for him? Oh, I've got a headline for him. Oh. What is it? McKenna flies supermodels to moon. <laughs> Photographic technician Delia Maguire says she knew everyone else was hypnotized, but didn't think she was. Little did she know. Martin Tanner once saw a hypnotherapist to stop him biting his nails and found hypnosis equally effective for fun or therapy. German-born Paul Murray is a student union president who'd seen a hypnotic show at university and was keen to try the experience. Ambulanceman Ian Cole from Frimley says he was amazed by the whole hypnotic process and surprised by his outrageous antics. Okay. 
Look at me, concentrate, close your eyes, sleep. When you wake up, you are all going to believe you are at a wedding. You will believe that you are the beautiful, blushing bride. However, after a few moments, you'll suddenly realise that the groom is not the man for you. No, in fact, you fancy the vicar. And you'll want to let him know with some subtle winks and gestures. When you wake up, you'll think you're the groom and you'll want everything to go really smoothly, so if things are not, you'll get very annoyed. When you wake up, you'll believe that you're the best man and you'll be so happy and emotional for the couple, but when it comes for that time to put on the ring, you'll suddenly realise that you're in love with the bride and you should tell everyone about that. When you wake up, you're going to believe you're the bride's father. You'll be sitting here enjoying the service, but every time the words, I do, are said, you'll feel a compulsion to leap up and wave your football rattle in the air and shout, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> the rest of you are the members of the congregation. When the vicar asks, is there anybody here that knows any reason why they should not be joined in holy matrimony, you'll have a damn good reason. Put your hand up. The more outrageous the reason, the better. Ready? <laughs> Everyone, eyes open, wide awake. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join this man and woman in holy matrimony. Now, marriage is a holy estate and not to be entered into lightly. So think carefully before you commit your bodies to one another with the words, <laughs> I do. Here we go, here we go. Please, please. <laughs> Have a little decorum. <laughs> now, before I ask the lovely couple to say the words, I do. Here we go, here we go. From these unseemly outbursts, or I shall have you restrained by the acolytes. <laughs> what are you doing? Please try to concentrate, Martin. It is your marriage, after all. <laughs> now, does anybody here present? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on. <laughs> does anybody here present know of any reason why these two lovely people? should not be brought together in holy wedlock. <laughs> I see. Uh, madam, you at the back there, that's... He's already married to my mum. Uh, yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you, madam, at the back with the glasses, stand up. I, Do I sit don't down. think her other five husbands are going to agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> five husbands, love. Could you sit down, sir, please? I'm thank sorry. you. And you, madam. Yes. <laughs> Must be my aftershave. Was yes. I was only knocking her off last <laughs> night. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> I could be knocking you off if you carry on. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Now the last one who wasn't on the end. There. She's not even real. She's an alien. Is she real? <laughs> Does this yes, look please real sit to you? That, uh, like, listen, let me, like please let me get on with the ceremony, please. Now, do either of you know of any reason why you should not be married? Nope. Thank you. Now, yeah. well. <laughs> what? Look, as the organist, the Wait bells, and like one hell of a knees up down the bricklayer's arms have all been laid on, I intend to continue. <laughs> now, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Thank you. Here we go, here we go. Please sit down. I've had enough of you, sir. What are you? Yes. Ian, please, I'm sorry. Let go of your rattle. Right. Right. Would you let go of this rattle, please? <laughs> let go. Let's get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where was I? Now, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. You do? Here we go, here we go! <laughs> please sit down! <laughs> Who's got the ring? I've got the ring. Will you please give it to the groom so I can get this wedding over with? Cheers, mate. I right. Know, but I love your wife. Shut up, man! Excuse me, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> she never really liked him anyway. She please, <laughs> no, please, please, please. Would you come over here? Hey, don't just go and sit down. Let's sit down. Hey, please, hold on, hold on. God, help me, please! The situation was, without a doubt, completely real. Big church, great vicar. And so he started flirting with my wife, and uh, I was I was just well into it, really looking forward to getting married. I opened my eyes up, saw the vicar. That was it, love. Had to have him, obsessed. Sorry, Martin, but you know, tough. 
It's got to happen. That was it. That's how I felt. Eyes open, wide awake, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. You're having a good time, aren't you, Martin? Yes. Now, um, this lot, some of them are hypnotised, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know they were hypnotised? Yeah. Yeah, but you're not. You're, you're actually completely normal, aren't you? Yeah. In fact, uh, some of these have been doing nutty things, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> in fact, that bloke on the end there, in the blue, he's a bit of an idiot, isn't he, you think? Yeah. In fact, yeah. <laughs> Me. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. he, he, he just called you an idiot, mate. No, he did. He wants a slap, he does. He wants a slap, does he? <laughs> Is that right? Do you want a slap? Yeah. He does. He wants a slap. <laughs> you want a slap outside? Yeah. yeah. In fact, I'll tell you what, he can probably bring his mates, can't he? Yeah. Sorted. <laughs> In fact, you'll have both hands tied behind your back as well, won't you? Yep. <laughs> me, mate. You can have a slap. <laughs> well, now's your chance because this is the end of part one, isn't it? Yeah. Ask you a personal question. Yeah. Do you ever wear women's underwear? Yeah. <laughs> Just checking. Wiring operator Sean McManus from Portsmouth had no idea what to expect from hypnosis, but reckons he found a side of himself he'd never seen before. Sean, do you believe that I could levitate things? No. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Quite positive. Okay, sleep. When you wake up, you will be unable to see things that are predominantly yellow. That is, things or people that are predominantly yellow will be completely invisible to you but you will be able to see anything that they move about. Eyes open, wide awake. Can I offer you one of these? Oh. One of these? <laughs> oh. Good. Now, <laughs> do you think that I could levitate that bottle, for example? I'd like to see you try. <laughs> you see, I've learned to concentrate my mind, and I use a special word. Watch this. Om... It's a bit spooky, isn't it? Too but, right. you know, anyone can do it. Why don't you have a go? Just concentrate your mind, say the magic word. That's it, go on. And imagine the bottle lifting. Go on, say on. Sean, 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 come back, come back, come back. Come back. Go on. You're nearly there. Go on, do it again. Mmm. How about enough? Come back, come back, come back. No, look, it's nothing to be scared of. Look, watch this. I'll do it with myself. It's really easy. All I do is I sit down, for example, concentrate my mind, <laughs> and I go, um... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Impressed? Very. <laughs> but I'd like to do something just a little bit more impressive. I'll tell you what, let's get rid of all this, shall we? Um... for a moment. <laughs> you see, it's all done with the power of the mind. It's fascinating, isn't it? It certainly is. You know, sometimes <laughs> I might be having an argument with someone and I think to myself, oh, I'd just really like to kick him up the bum and, you know, ooh, just suddenly... <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Works every <everything>. time. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you a trick, Sean, that... Well, I think you'll find quite amazing. I know that magicians can do things with wires and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But this is a trick that no magician could do, because I'm going to levitate this. <laughs> you think I could levitate this? You've got to be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what we need to do is really concentrate. So step back. So I want you to help me. OK, concentrate now. Get ready to make the sound. Let there be light.
All I could see was uh, with the car, it was just basically going up. I could not see anything else, but yet I could hear all these people laughing. But it just didn't bother me. I just wanted to get that car up. And I was more frightened of running out of breath and saying, oh, just thinking, oh, God, if I don't gasp for another breath quick enough, this car is just going to come falling down. Michael Welsh, a civil servant from Vista, was slightly sceptical before the show, but was amazed how quickly his nerves evaporated under hypnosis. Nearly at the end of the show, eyes open wide awake, wakey, wakey. Just want to ask you a question, if that's OK. We're going to go down the pub after the show. Do you want to buy everyone here a drink? Yeah. That's really kind of you, so the drinks are you. <laughs> Michael, can you play the piano? No. <laughs> Asleep. When you wake up, though, you'll believe you can. You'll think you're a world-class pianist. <laughs> you'll be delighted at the idea of accompanying someone, and if there should be any complaints about your work, you'll be really annoyed and you'll blame them instead. Eyes open, wide awake, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Well, that's just about it. We're nearly at the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. I thought it would be a nice idea this evening to end with a bit of culture. So would you please welcome my special guest, Dame Hilda Brackett. <laughs> Oh, what a smart tie. Aren't oh, you looking lovely you. suit? <laughs> That's very kind. Now, the other night when I came to see you, you closed yes. the show with such a marvellous number. I wondered if you wouldn't mind doing a little singing for us to finish the show this evening. Sing? Oh, no. No, dear, no. <laughs> I didn't come here to sing. You invited me along to see your show. Isn't... There was no mention of singing. Couldn't we...? I mean, I, I never sing without my pianist, Dr Hinge. Right. And we've been together a lifetime. I would never work with anybody else. I'm Isn't sorry. there something we could do to persuade you? No. No, I'm so, I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but no, dear. No, no amount of persuasion, you know, abject grovelling or anything like that, I would never accept. I only work with Dr Hinge. What about, say, um, 50 quid? That'll do nicely. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's our pension. <laughs> Yes. We have an excellent pianist with us here this evening. Michael, Michael, come here just for a moment, would you? <laughs> Michael, if I could introduce you to Dame Hilda. Good night. Now, Ma Dame Hilda, Dame Hilda, come back. Uh, Michael's played with lots and lots of uh, famous, well known uh, people uh, in, in the music industry. Beethoven, Mozart, I taught them everything they knew. Pavarotti in the park. Pavarotti, my dear. I was there. Oh, wonderful. I know, I dare. Uh, what about Joan Sutherland? Have you played for Joan yes. Sutherland? Uh, yes, everyone. Uh, uh, Joan and I, we like that, you know. Both got arthritis, yes. Oh, <laughs> that's wonderful. Take a seat. Oh, <laughs> sweet boy. Yes, that's right, lovely. What are you going to sing for us, Dame Hilda? Well, I suppose the best thing for me to sing, you know, under these circumstances, would be the song, We'll Meet Again. Lovely. Well, I think we want to give a nice big round of applause to Dame Hilda, accompanied by Michael. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> One, two, three. We. What did you stop for? <laughs> you're ridiculous. You're making me look ridiculous. You're making me look stupid. <laughs> you don't need any help. Here. You were there ahead of me. No. <laughs> Let's start all over again. But you're making a very, very sad mistake. As long as you promise to sing properly this time. How? <laughs> I went with talent. I'm surprised you ever got on this show.